Hi, this is Paul Howell, Managing Editor for Healthcare Asia magazine. And today I'm presenting the Healthcare Asia Awards, celebrating all the best achievements and milestones of hospitals, clinics, and service providers from across the Asia Pacific healthcare industry. Winning the award for Corporate Social Responsibility of the Year in India was Jahangir Hospital. And I'm joined now by its CEO, Vinod Sawantwadkar, uh, and also Dr. Anuradha Kadlakar, Deputy Director and Consultant Pediatrician with the Jahangir Medical Research Institute. Vinod, thank you very much for joining me and congratulations on the win. Uh, thank you, Paul. Uh, uh, hello, respected uh, juries, uh, the esteemed guests, ladies and gentlemen. On uh, behalf of our chairman, trustees, and my entire team at Jahangir Hospital and SCJ MRI, uh, I would like to thank you for a wonderful uh, honoring us with this wonderful and prestigious award of uh, Healthcare Asia. Uh, we look forward in future to participate and excel in more and more award categories. So thank you so much once again for honoring us with this award. Thanks a lot. Dr. Anurata, can you tell us more about the Caring for Our Sweetlings program? This was a juvenile diabetes uh, intervention. Uh, what were the key learnings during and after the implementation? And what was the most fulfilling part of doing the program for yourself? The Sweetlings program, as we call it, is a program for children with underprivileged children with diabetes. And uh, Actually, diabetes is quite common in children. And in India, it's around 10 to 15 children in 100,000 have diabetes. It is very democratic. It affects all classes, the poorest and the richest, and it's actually quite difficult to treat. So one of our most important motivations on starting this clinic was uh, because when we used to diagnose children with diabetes, they never came back to us. Often they succumbed and particularly little girls received no treatment. And if they did receive any treatment, um, it was so little and so badly done that children came back with complications with blindness and things like that. So it was just heartbreaking. So in 2010, we started this multidisciplinary program where we have pediatricians, pediatric endocrinologists, nutritionists, and a whole slew of health workers. So we started with a few kids and now we are looking after almost 560 children the youngest being a newborn and the children leave us at 22 or the youth leave us at 22. Our clinics are every Saturday. We provide almost all the medications and help that these children require. And we have tried to be sensitive to what the children and their families need. So the program has been metamorphosed and adding more and more things. And initially, actually, the hospital and we, some of us consultants came together to fund the program. But since the last few years, we have corporate funding. So if you, um, if you ask me what the key learnings are, one of them would be that these are very, very brave children and families. The disorder is that of the family and not of the child. And the impact of the social environment and the school is a lot on the child and on the disorder. It has a huge psychological impact on the child. We need to treat younger and older children differently. You know, adolescents can, normal adolescents can be very different. I mean, a diabetic adolescent is just through the roof. And in case of poor illiterate families, we really need to have some, you know, very, very different strategies. If you ask me what is the most fulfilling thing for me as, you know, I'm a pediatrician, having the children come here, play, be naughty, be normal is what really makes me happy. And uh, the other thing is, you know, some of our children who passed out, they are now doing well, they are either married or they are, you know, doing good jobs. And they come back and ask me, oh, madam, what do you think we can do for you? That makes me really, really happy. It comes up full circle. So those are my answers to your first question. And what were some of the challenges that you encountered during the development and implementation of the Caring for Our Sweetlings program? And of course, how did you solve them? So like in all, you know, programs, we also had our share of problems. So um, actually type 1 diabetes is a very, very, you know, um, hard disease to conquer. And we needed staff and we needed a lot of trained personnel. We needed good infrastructure, which was also, I mean, the hospital chipped in, but initially it was hard. Then when we started, actually, the, we started planning the program in 2009 at that time. 
there was very little awareness about what type 1 diabetes is and because there was less awareness in everybody not only the patients and the doctor community but and the corporates at large and people were like oh is this even around do we need to fund you so because the awareness was less the funding was also very difficult to come by in the implementation one of the hardest thing i found was parental illiteracy you know if a father and mom can't read numbers what insulin would they give and uh, you know in the family many families don't have power something we can't even imagine there are no fridges in families then there are the usual things like child abuse then you know there are so many families who could not come to us because they did not have the money to travel and even if they did they missed out on a day's wage so there was no food on the table at night so they missed out on the medical appointments um the younger the child is i mean we see very very small children as well they need higher end insulins and that can be extremely expensive and you know bump up the cost of the program which again makes it hard for us to convince donors um for children with diabetes after around 5 to 8 years of diabetes you start seeing complications like renal problems and heart problems and eye problems so that is another major issue that we've started facing because now we are 11 years into the program and i don't know what to do about the sustainability because it's just so expensive to run the program if you look at solutions then yes train staff volunteered and we also took staff on we have regular trainings and i think we are now at a point when we are quite comfortable in doing what we are doing um our hospital is very very well known for the big heart that it has and they provided a wonderful space for our children so that the children actually associated with a happy caring environment and not a place where you will go and be pricked and poked so you know the hospital provided space the other infrastructure that we needed we did a lot of awareness programs whether it was in schools it was in medical colleges it was um, to the medical fraternity in communities and uh, but but we are very far from making a dent really if you look at uh, the family level we found that if the parents were illiterate it's better to you know train the old child or if the child himself is 8 or 9 he can learn himself or sometimes you can find a healthcare worker in the village who can actually help out um uh, we also did have started i mean almost 5 years ago with home visits you know because we have some families in which there's a lot of uh, abuse the children are being beaten and then you know our social worker steps in we've also at times actually taken the help of the police to protect our child um we give travel allowance um we also say and we do give a daily wage because what happens is that you don't want them to come to us and you know be checked out and then go without food that night i mean it just doesn't make any sense we've moved to a lot of higher insulins you know better tools for giving insulins it's very important for children under 2 years of age because giving three or four injections to a little child for a mother who's 20 22 is really really hard as far as the complications are concerned once again the hospital to the rescue and there are lots of consultants that we have who are actually pitching in i think the last thing i would like to say here is about covid it is it was really terrible to have covid and our families were scared and you know they couldn't come to us so with our hospital platform we've been uh, doing tele consultations we have actually a very very you know our frontline team is very enthusiastic we delivered insulin to people's houses we also gave distress support and ration and you know dry food to people to families who had either lost their livelihood or you know lost the main breadwinner so a lot of that has happened in covid but hoping for the best as we go forward well thank you very much dr anurada congratulations again on such a fantastic program but such having such a significant impact uh, across your community in what are some very trying circumstances at the moment you know if i can turn to you what's next for jehangir hospital uh, where do you see the organization heading towards over the next 5 or 10 years uh well paul uh, before me answering to that question you know let me uh, once again say that dr anuradha and her team is doing a fantastic job and really remarkable you will find very very few of them doing such kind of work not only in india but across so thank you so much uh, in in such kind of tiring time as well 
Now coming back to the question, which you know you have asked, where do we see ourselves in the next five to ten years? Definitely, we have uh, big plans as an organization to grow. Uh, we see the healthcare in a very very futuristic uh, manner. We have a very futuristic approach when it comes to healthcare. In fact, our vision and vision statement is also in a similar line. We look forward to make healthcare more affordable and accessible because we truly believe if healthcare is not affordable and accessible, it is not a healthcare. You know, healthcare has to be affordable and accessible. So how we try to do that is, you know, we look forward to have a technology intervention because we find that's the best way to make things accessible and affordable. We look forward to have a deep dive when it comes to artificial intelligence, machine learning, probably uh, internet of things, something which we are looking at, uh, big data, to make healthcare simply, uh, I know more uh, transparent. At the same time, uh, we are looking to uh, add on the uh, speciality, super speciality uh, to the changing uh, medical dynamics as and when it is required. Of course, like most of the healthcare uh, players, people who are there in this space, we are also looking forward to add on uh, the infrastructure, maybe adding on beds, which we are looking to do it in the next five to 10 years have a hub and spoke model. So, you know, we simply don't crowd uh, the flagship unit, but we give the treatment to the people and that's a part of the accessibility. And uh, of course, our thrust is going to be on our human resource development as well, because, uh, you know, unlike the other industry, healthcare thrives a lot on the human resource. You know, you require a quality uh, manpower, maybe, uh, you know, medical, paramedical and all around. So to sum up, uh, for next five to 10 years, we look forward to have a very, very robust and a solid program in terms of accessibility, affordability, and transparency. That is what we are looking forward for next five years, five to 10 years. And finally, Vinod, what does it mean to you and Dr. Anurada and all of your teams to have won at this year's Healthcare Asia Awards, particularly considering the ongoing battle with the pandemic at the moment? Definitely, you know, this is going to have a very amplifying uh, effect all across and it's going to motivate uh, not only our team, it's going to motivate team of uh, all the people who are there in this space and what a time to get this because that's a need of the hour right now. And with this, I see uh, the, all the healthcare workers, uh, you know, uh, going that little extra mile in terms of contributing uh, their little towards the society. And uh, I see more and more uh, organizations and uh, individual people also coming forward, like uh, you know, our SCJ MRI and uh, Dr. Hadilkar in creating a very, very sustainable healthcare projects, which benefit a large at the society. Vinod Sawant Wadkar and Dr. Anurada Kadilkar, thank you both very much once again, and congratulations on the award. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to you and the entire team of uh, Healthcare Asia. Thank you so much for honoring us with this award. Thank you. Thank you.